Hi, this is Odean here. Today I'm going to have a look at the Fans Project CA-13 diesel figure and military multiplexer kit. This set is Fans Project's take on a classics version of Motormaster. Motormaster being the leader of the Stunticons and the body section of Menasaur back in G1. Um, I'm not going to be showing the combined form today because I just think it will make too much of a video. It's a pretty complicated set as it is, but I do have the other guys and I probably will get around to that eventually. Diesel comes in a long box as is shipped in this big chunk. Now there's not other th free floating stuff in that box but he is very dense so when you pick him up he's unusually hefty for a transformer of that size and that's because for the most part this uh, truck is crammed packed solid and all the workings are inside pretty densely packed. Unfortunately, this set is not scaled to anything. Now, I'm not a huge carer about scale, but um, sometimes things reach extremes which just look off with the rest of my stuff, and I think Motormaster Diesel here is hitting one of those extremes. Now, I'll, I'll show you some other figures later, but his own set is even way out of whack. If you get T-Bone here, who's a sports car, I have a hard time believing that he's going to be as big in comparison as he is. Uh, it's not a killer, but it makes the set for me really a standalone thing that I can't put with anything else. So it, it is disappointing in that respect. My current Optimus Prime for Classics is Orion, and he's a little bit oversized for Classics, so he's gone the other way. When you put these two in the same picture together, the difference is so dramatic that I can't, I can't have these guys together. It just throws off my senses to see them like that. So you can see here, there's a very, very big difference in the size of the cabs, and Orion has no trailer, so you can't compare that, but um, he goes a little bit better with a Classics Prime. I do have a Classics Prime somewhere, not easily at hand, but he's still way too small for pretty much every Optimus Prime that you're going to have, and even he is out of scale with other fans' project stuff. Putting that aside, he's a good-looking truck, but there are other flaws with his truck mode that uh, may not immediately be obvious. The first one being that there is no gap between the cab and the trailer, which is pretty impossible, and I don't think um, any truck is really going to be that way. I can even overlook that, I think, but what really catches my eye is the distance between the front and back, back axles here. So it seems to be way too long compared to the size of the truck, and that is a bit distracting for me. I think, I mean... The reason they've done that is just space for transformation, but uh, you can separate this like that and form a little kind of weird truck unit. And when I put it in that mode, the distance becomes more okay with me because it's like this is some custom strange truck that has a custom bed and it just uh, is built that way. Now, that does expose a ugly gap at the back but what you can do is grab the part that you pulled off, let's get rid of that block for a minute, and just pop off these uh, pieces back here, which have separated. There are actually two pieces. These can transform into guns later on. But let's put them back together for now, and they can hook in the same way. So there you go, you can close off the back and give it a door so it doesn't look too weird. And I, I know some people don't like that, I kind of do like it. Um, it doesn't look like Motormaster, but just as some, if this is repainted into some other transformer, I could even buy that without all the add-on bits. I think that looks acceptable. Now I'm going to attempt to transform this, but it's going to be heavily edited because this guy is just tricky. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop off this might be a little bit hard, put those aside, then the whole back up the top can kind of split like this and come apart, so you can see that folds back like that, you can just concertina them down into a smaller rectangle. Now next, you should be able to Click it down like this at that joint, that'll be the kind of hips later on, and then fold these sections backwards. It doesn't really 
say a lot of things in the instructions. The instructions miss out quite a few steps. I think at this point you can bend the wheels in like this and they've kind of got a locking spot there. Separate these leg sections and once they're locked in it can be a bit tricky because there's tabs that separate in different directions like some lift and some just pull apart so it can be a bit hard to do that. Um, give yourself some clearance by putting it out sideways like this and then move those feet up like that. We're starting to disconnect things. That gives you the clearance you need to rotate this bit up like that. So the front of the window kind of separates. Do that on both sides. Grab both halves like this and bend it down. That's kind of the knee. Have to also bend that internal part down. Like that. Now there are a lot of different things that swing backwards and forwards here. Uh, it's not related to robot mode transformation, so you can kind of leave that intact. It's best now to give it a squeeze in like this to make sure everything locks in the horizontal direction because it does have travel in that way. I'm going to bend these feet, and the goal of this is to kind of get... I'm going to show it a bit closer. There's a little tab in here and a little slot in the swing bar, and it kind of has to bend around sideways and tab in on itself like that into that kind of uh, twisted orientation then you can just straighten off the foot and do the same on the other side you can then close these panels which form the back of the legs give yourself a bit of clearance and then rotate the foot the whole way around because that's actually pointing in the wrong direction at the moment Now, making sure that these flaps are up to allow for clearance, we're going to twist the lower section of the waist around so that the crotch now lines up with the coloured paint at the front like this. And that's the bottom half of the robot done. So his legs all the way up to the waist is done. Next, grab these two chunks at the front and we're going to bend them out sideways like this. Uh, that is going to form the arms a little bit later on. I think at this point too, I'm going to bend this internal rotator up like that so that the smooth side is on the outside and then fold this shut just to form the chest there's a swing bar here now I want to focus on this because this is a very thin piece of plastic and it seems to me that this is the most scary part of the whole transformation um, two little bits that look like maybe three millimeter square cross sections have to take all that force the first time you do it, it'll be really stiff. It's got a little bit looser for me now, and it's not as scary, but I I don't know why they didn't go die-cast with that. Um, it seems that that's the perfect use for metal, and it would have really made me feel a lot more comfortable here if they had gone that way. Anyway, you can squeeze it down, and it just pegs right into the waist, like so. Next, grab this outside panel and bend it up like this. And then if you push it that way, it reveals the hand. Do the same thing on the other side. Bend this up, push it sideways, the hand pops out. We're almost there now. A little bit of twisting and moving around. And you're going to have a robot arm. And what happens is you could see there that this is a, a double joint where it's got two swivels. That is not how it's meant to move in robot mode. And it should have had a locking mechanism because it ends up moving down and prying the chest open and that's another uh, pretty poor part of the design of this figure is that that bit there has a gap instead of snapping shut uh, it's constantly doing that I'll do this and end up by doing that by accident when what I meant to do was bend it at this joint let's pop up the head and rotate that around that's pretty much it one of the bad things about this guy is that we're left with these big wings sticking off the back. Now, I choose to put them upwards like that as wings. Something about it seems better to me than downwards like this as some kind of skirt. Either way, it's not very attractive and doesn't look like Motormaster. And, you know, I don't like the way that's done. I don't think it looks good at all. Uh, as far as other parts of how the robot looks, you can see that they've gone with the 
boxy kind of square bucket head to try and look like the cartoon. Uh, I'm all for that head. I've got nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I like that. But what I don't like is the face. The face doesn't look like uh, it is a hardened kind of crazed warrior. It looks exactly the opposite of that. It's a terrible face for Motormaster, and it is so far from the character that I have a hard time even thinking of this toy as Motormaster, and it's kind of, that face alone sort of ruins the set for me. Another big problem that I get with this figure are the angled heels. So the ball joint itself is, is pretty stiff, um, at least at the moment, but if you have it on any kind of surface which uh, isn't exactly flat or a pose where he's standing up straight so that his backpack is kind of heavy, this is the result of that. So you can you can work around it by clicking his knee back like that and making him lean forward slightly. But if you don't like your figures always leaning forward, then a little bit of jiggle is always going to knock this guy right over. Another spot that is concerning me is with these hips here. So his hips have to be strong enough to take the combined mode, but you can see they're starting to be spread apart by the force of what's inside. This gap starting to widen here. There's no screw behind it in that point. There's just one central screw that goes through the center here. So I'm a little bit worried that over time this is gradually exploding and is going to permanently warp that plastic so it may be ruined. Uh, third party is so new the longevity of the toys that they make is a bit hard to judge. Here he is with Revolver Core who I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. They're pretty comparable in size. Revolver's about half a head shorter, uh, almost equal in mass. I guess this guy's a little bit heavier. Diesel's got these huge wings which do weigh him down a bit, but they look pretty good. They could go off against one another. This is Diesel versus Warden from Perfect Effect. Very similar in height, but Warden is much heavier figure than this guy, and probably because he's got some die cast in him, and he is just very dense. Warden's got thick, dense plastic, but they do they do look good together because of the similarity in size. Here is Huff. So Huff, his truck mode is actually closer to scale with what we've got going here with Diesel, and you can see he's much shorter, and that's because he's got no a uh, little back trailer section that turns into his legs. He's just the uh, cab. So I guess this is how high Diesel would be if he didn't have those add-on bits. Here's a comparison that puts him where I'm really happiest to show him, and that's with these old-style classics. So Hound was always a short one, but he's one of my all-time favorite Hasbro classics, and uh, he's really awesome. I've never reviewed him. But standing next to Motormaster here, that looks just about right to my eye. And if I had to put him in robot mode anywhere, I think it would be with these guys. Now to the weapons. So if you remember back, I popped this panel from the back of the truck, the doors, double doors. If we just separate it like this and then fold it in on, your, on it itself, we get two, uh, I don't know if they're not rifles, they're not pistols, they're kind of long barreled pistols. So if you want, you could pop one in each hand. Like this, and he could dual wield these. They don't really look too much like guns. If you use your imagination, I guess it kind of works, uh, but not traditional gun in appearance. Now, alternately, you can combine them into one longer form, and I'm not sure if that's to do with uh, Menace or more, but to get that, we have to pop off these extra bits and pieces from the block section then slide this block in half. Uh, we're going to bring out, what are we going to do with that? It's going to go this way. One of these is going to hook up to this barrel, like that, I believe. This piece is going to snap on like this. Uh, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to snap on up the other way. Like that. And finally, this end piece is going to go over like that. So now we've got a much larger hand weapon.
which as you can see is too heavy for the pin joint in his elbow to hold up. The block section that was on the back looks like this. Now for some reason that I'm not really clear on, there's two of these. One of them was floating loose in the box from BBTS, the other one was in the package. Um, maybe there's a QC issue that I'm not aware of, but they both seem pretty much the same to me. Uh, anyway, all you got to do is plug this in here to give you some kind of handle. Maybe it goes the other way, actually. No, nope, it seems to be that way. Oh, here we go, that looks better. So, I'm guessing that this is the handle for the combined robot form. You can flip it up that way if you want. And do it like this, although I don't know why you'd want the handle sticking right out at the end, and then it can kind of bend down like that. The next accessory he has is the back of the truck. Now I'm not going to go into the full combined mode, so all of these parts aren't going to be used now, but um, the first thing I'll show is that we pop this off at the bottom, and this is the hilt of the sword for Menasaur, so let's put that aside. Next thing, we pop this little uh, undercarriage where the wheels are. This is going to form What's that, the chest of Menasaur? It does transform like so, flipping little bits around, but uh, not much use except in these two modes in robot mode. You can join it on as some kind of shield, but it looks a bit odd. Uh, next, we've got this. So we can pry it in half. It's the same on both sides. Inside is stored the tip of the blade of the combined mode sword. On the side is this panel, which forms part of that sword, and this panel, which also forms part of the sword. And you can see that both these halves are identical, except on one you choose to pick one to put the hands on. It could be either one. Let's pop those off. There's little slots. You can see it slotted through there. It's not the round thing. If you try to push it through the round uh, hole, it bends the plastic and will break it. It's actually the, the slot that it tabs through. I'm going to go ahead and join those panels together to form the sword. So they just squeeze together like that. And then on one side we stick the hilt, and on the other side tab in the point. So that's a very nice looking sword, and I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, They've really gone to great lengths to make every little bit of this densely packed box do something. It's a strength and a weakness. It's a strength in that sometimes it looks good. It's a weakness in that it's very fiddly. But anyway, that's pretty cool. He can't hold that properly in this robot mode. I mean, his fists aren't big enough. But if you grab the combiner fist, you can see that inside there's a slot that can just lock that on like that and then that becomes quite stable. They're pretty good fists too. And I'm just going to briefly show them here. Grab this big chunk and we want to pull it in half, but before you can pull it in half, just raise up these side panels a little bit to disengage the tabs. Then you'll be able to do that. Let's do the same on both sides. Raise it up. Pull it in half. Now these do different things on the figure, but uh, it's not very pretty in how they work, as far as I'm concerned. So what we can do with, which one's this? This is not the one I want to show. With this one, it can make a kind of shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. You can see these missiles in here, and they actually have little tabs in the missiles that help it all join together. But the problem is the missile is only held on with glue, which on one of mine popped off. So now it's kind of held together with blue tack. Anyway, we bend it outwards like this to give a little bit of clearance and then flip around this little uh, missile spam section like that. And then we just want to bend it up like this and bring it together. And as I said, if, if at this point you wanted to, here's where you would tab it in together under here. But I don't really want to do it because it forces the missiles to break. One of mine broke and I don't want to... I don't want to pop them all off. I don't feel like getting some super glue. So I'm just going to leave that approximately on. And grabbing his shoulder peg, which is part of the combine, it's like the combiner peg up here. You can stick it on right there. 
and have it however you want, like this. So in this instance, I've got them on top, pointing all these rockets outwards, and it looks pretty goofy. There's other ways you can do it by slotting it into this hole at the back, so it can just join on on the back of his neck. Um, let's see if I can get that happening now. Like this. Now, it may look a little bit closer to do it like that, but the problem is it's less secure. So if you want it to look a little bit closer to his head, then yeah, join it on, on the back of the neck, but if you want it to stay on the toy better, then you join it onto the shoulders. It's coming. You can see that joint in there is coming untransformed, like what I was complaining about before. Uh, either way, I don't really like these pieces, and um, I feel it's kind of forced for them finding a place for them there. I feel like this stuff is useless kibble that was left over from the truck, and they just did what they could do to give it a purpose and it doesn't really add anything to the figure. My final thoughts. On paper, it sounds like this is a fantastic idea. Make a Motormaster that fully transforms the whole truck into um, what you need to make a Menasaur, looks good and be poseable in robot mode, and looks pretty accurate in truck mode. And in one way, they've done that because the truck mode does look pretty good, and I am happy with it. And also, the robot mode has its strong points. It is poseable. Um, the square bucket head looks pretty good. The, the colors are spot on. I'm really happy with the colors. The plastic quality is also pretty good. But the one ingredient which hasn't been taken care of in this package, at least for me, is fun. Um, it is too complex and comes apart too many places for me to enjoy the toy. So I'm like most collectors I do stick things on my shelf for a long period of time but I also like to fiddle with stuff and every time I fiddle with this it becomes a floppy pile of bits and pieces which it kind of just ruins it for me I don't want to grab it I get it in a in a nice pose like what you see here and I don't want to touch it again after that because it just just doesn't hold it so good like you can see I've got that balancing there but if I give gravity any say in what happens it'll just fall over I feel like this is what happens when you stop thinking about toys as something for kids. I know third party is for us adults, but this is it taken to an extreme where the, the, the playability part of the equation is just flushed away and all you're left with is kind of fan wank stuff, which has its place and we all like those nods where things look the way they're meant to look. But sometimes it is, it is at the detriment of other parts of the experience and that's where I think Fans Project have gone wrong with this. I do like this stuff. If you've seen my other reviews, you've seen I've got loads and loads of Fans Project stuff. Um, just Revolver Core I showed a minute ago. And, you know, who else have I got around here? Just sitting on my desk within arm's reach is, is still, uh, what's this, Smart Robin. So obviously I'm liking something they do. And, you know, this criticism is, is not at all of their stuff. But with Diesel... I really think that something has gone wrong. My complaint actually stretches further than just Diesel. It goes to all the Stunticons. I feel the Stunticons are a huge letdown as a set. So I'm going to show this, which is appalling to me. The window on here has a crack running right down it. I've transformed this a total of one time. I've transformed it to car and back to robot. And I'm pretty careful and I have a lot of expensive stuff. So I'm not just going like a maniac. But this cracked while I was transforming it back to robot, and I can't transform it again because it's going to crack off at the screw and it's totally ruined. So I'm really reluctant to even turn this into the combined mode. And something, as I said, something has gone wrong in the process of this toy. And what's gone wrong is, is maybe, maybe it should have been bigger. If it had been bigger, I know the cost would have been more, but stuff like this wouldn't be happening at a slightly bigger scale. So this has been my video review for CA-13 Diesel and Military Multiplexer Kit from Fans Project. I'm Odean. Thank you for watching.